Hey everyone, Face here with uh, number four in my series of uh, tutorial videos on lighting models and model electronics. Uh, in this video, uh, actually in the next couple of videos, I'm going to basically demonstrate how to implement the techniques I've shown in the first couple of videos into a model. Basically from start to finish, how to light a model using simple techniques. Uh, the model that I'm going to use is uh, the Pegasus Hobbies uh, Martian War Machine from the uh, 1953 version of the film by uh, uh, director George Powell. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's a classic. Um, the kit itself, it's molded in uh, 48 scale, though how they determined that, I'm not really sure. It never really looked like the, uh, um, the, uh, the ships were that, uh, that accurately... Uh, depicted in the movie, but whatever. Um, the main body of it comes in uh, two halves. Um, not a lot to it. It's molded in this kind of cream color, uh, which unfortunately is very, very translucent. Um, if, uh, if you take a look, you can actually see the shadow of my hand behind it. It's really that transparent. Which is funny, because on every other level, this kit was absolutely designed to be lit. So why they would use such a, a transparent plastic uh, is is kind of a mystery to me. But uh, in this series, I will uh, I will explain how to uh, overcome that problem. Um, the rest of the kit, there's not really much to it. It's only made up of about 15 parts. Uh, there's a base which has uh, a molded detail of uh, the planet Earth focusing mostly on North America, uh, which you can see off to this side, and then Europe over here, and a bit of Africa. Um, very uh, uh, super deformed from the looks of it. Uh, it looks like uh, in the War of the Worlds universe, uh, England and Ireland have merged as one land mass and joined with mainland Europe, so I don't know who was designing this, but whatever. Uh, it also has the uh, the War of the Worlds logo molded into the front of it. Um, the rest of the parts are pretty much... Uh, there's a few clear parts, lenses for uh, uh, the various weapons and uh, parts that light up. Uh, but this here, this is the eye stock for the, the uh, uh, death ray, uh, which if you look on the inside, has a nice wide channel lots of room to fit wiring in for the uh, the death ray itself which is molded in two parts uh, top and bottom with a, uh, a couple of clear parts which get embedded inside it uh, and there's lots of room in here to fit a small LED um, so it won't be difficult to uh, to light in fact it'll be quite uh, quite easy and quite a lot of fun uh, there's a few other clear parts here and there but nothing really worth mentioning um, I'm going to do a very basic build-up of this. I'm probably not going to fully paint it or even use the uh, uh, the proper colors of LEDs because, frankly, I don't have any enough, rather. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got a couple packets of uh, white LEDs and no greens, and so I'm pretty much going to have to improvise. So I'm probably going to end up using white uh, to, to, to color it. Um, because fortunately, since the uh, the clear parts are all molded in color, then you know backlit with white will work just fine. Uh, in fact, it might even look better, but whatever. Um, anyway, I'm going to get started on this and uh, show you basically from this from the ground up how to uh, how to uh, design a uh, system, how to integrate it into the model, and uh, how to supply power to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, if you'll uh, just bear with me, I'll cut over to my spray booth and we can get started and I'll show you how to uh, how to deal with the transparent pro uh, transparency problem. So I hope you can uh, hear what I'm saying over the sound of my compressor and my spray booth going. Um, basically what I'm about to do is spray a, uh, a, f a layer of flat black on the inside surface of, uh, of all the parts that are going to have lights in them. This will have the effect of blocking the light from getting out. This is what I've referred to in previous videos as a light block layer. 
And there we go. That is the uh, the top half uh, basically ready to go. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything impressive, just like a good thick layer of black paint to uh, prevent any light from inside from escaping. Uh, you can lay it on thick, you can lay it on in multiple coats, it doesn't really matter. It just has to be, you know, fairly effective. I mean, you can see from the other side, compared to the other one already, you can see a pretty significant difference uh, from, uh, from the backlight uh, in, the, uh, in the transparency of the plastic. So I will, uh, I will do that to the, uh, the bottom half uh, as well, and I'll probably hit the, uh, the top and bottom halves each with a second coat, as well as the, uh, uh, the eye stalks uh, with the death rays. So uh, I'll come back to that in uh, just a moment. And so, uh, here now we have the, uh, the completed light block layer. Um, or at least the first coat. I'm probably going to have to do a second coat. Uh, and in fact, I may have to do a, a coat on the outside as well. Um, because this plastic is so translucent, even with a good thick coat of uh, flat black. See, I'll pull up my trusty uh, flashlight here. I don't know if you can see that through there. You can still see some light shining through the plastic. It's even a little more obvious through the other side. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, do a quick and uh, quick coat of the outside as well to give this a really good, complete blockage of light. Because um, if you don't, then you're really gonna end up with with problems. Because your LEDs are gonna shine through the plastic and it's just not gonna look very good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I won't bother to to to, to show it because you've already seen it. Uh, but I will explain what the next step is, uh, and that is, and which I will do at the same time uh, when I do my second coat of flat black, uh, which is the light reflective layer, um, which is done exclusively on the inside, which basically creates a reflective surface uh, for the LEDs, uh, for the light to, uh, to, to bounce off of. Because anyone who remembers elementary you know, art class will know, will remember that black absorbs light. Uh, so if I were to just go ahead and put the LEDs in this as it was, you wouldn't get nearly as good a, an effect as if you created a reflective surface inside for the light to bounce off of and basically find an opening, uh, which will be where the, uh, the clear parts are mounted at the, uh, the tips of the wings and at the front. Um, so the t what I typically use is uh, Tamiya XF2 flat white. Now you might think that gloss white would work better, but I'll be damned if I can explain why, but flat white just works better than gloss. Uh, conversely, you may also think a metallic color, like chrome silver or uh, silver, any, any kind of silver. I typically use Tamiya, so I use their, their color names primarily. Um, but something about the metallic nature of those actually reduces the, their reflectivity. Um, I don't know why. Someone tried to explain it to me once. I, I don't get it. All I know is that of all the colors I have tried, flat white seems to work the best. So um, I'll come back to, uh, to my spray booth in a minute uh, after I've done the, uh, the outside coat. And I'll show you the, uh, the reflective coat. So you can see here I've gone ahead and painted the uh, outside of the main uh, fuselage parts with uh, the black light block layer, uh, as well as another coat on the inside. Uh, and I've managed to achieve almost total light blockage. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with the result that I've got. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a quick, uh, a quick layer of uh, flat white on the inside surfaces to function as the uh, reflective layer. And there it is. Um, you know, it's, you're pretty much striving for the same kind of results as with the, uh, the light block layer. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect showroom um, uh, appearance. You're, you're, you're just looking for like a quick and dirty, you know, co coating, coverage of the parts, you know, as best you can. Um, I mean, you want to try and get as, as thorough a coverage as you can, so I'm probably going to do a second coat 
uh, in a little bit. But uh, for right now, you know, it's it, I'm quite happy with uh, with how it looks. So. So, for all my talk of uh, just doing a quick and dirty paint job on this, I'm actually pretty impressed with uh, the finish that I got. It's uh, quite, uh, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's fairly well done for, you know, taking all of ten minutes. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the inside, as I showed, is already is, is fully painted um, and just ready to be, uh, to, to be modified to accommodate all the lighting. Uh, which I will go over in the next video. So do please stay tuned for that, and uh, to everyone out there, thanks for watching, and uh, happy modeling.